Good morning or afternoon, everyone. We are going to be spending our two hours talking about the IRC Chapter 4, Footings and Foundations. Um, just as background, this chapter in the IRC has more provisions that are coming from local conditions as opposed to a big picture nationwide condition. So because soils vary so much, our footings and foundations vary a lot. And we'll talk as we go about a particular provision and what type of foundation it's really looking at and where in the country you might see those particular foundations. So hopefully it will become more clear what the IRC is requiring and what it isn't. And then of course we will go beyond that to once the IRC's limits are reached, where are your opportunities? So today, focusing simply on foundations, footings, and the prescriptive sections of the IRC, and then where an engineer design is going to come in. This is the third of our series of four presentations. And in case you need to contact us in the future, in your handouts will be our contact information. If you don't have somebody at the International Code Council to call when you have a question, feel free to reach out and call me. I happen to be in uh, West Richland, Washington, so central Washington area. David, did you want to mention anything right now? Yeah, if, you, if anyone has any questions, um, you know, I'm not officially part of ICC, but I can try and best answer them for you. And I'm in mountain time. I'm in Colorado. So um, probably best to email me. But if if you email and we decide to, to uh, communicate via phone, that would be um, mountain time. <laughs> All right. Let me go to the next slide here. So what we will be covering today are foundation requirements, and then the site itself, what are the requirements within the IRC, what happens when it goes outside that, what is some of the weird language in the IRC really talking about. We'll look at materials, and then we'll spend some time on footings and how the IRC divides those out from foundation walls and how it also kind of muddles it in the footing section, where we'll also talk about slab on grade and stem walls. Then the last part, we'll look at the different requirements for foundation walls as well and what they are. <laughs> so just starting with the IRC foundation requirements. Um, start at Chapter 4, the IRC basically says you have options. You can, as a designer, use the IRC for your foundation. You can choose to do a concrete foundation and use PCA 100. ACI 332 or ACI 318. If you're doing a masonry foundation, you can do TMS 402. So all of those options um, occur right in the front. Oh, I forgot. If you're doing a wood foundation, they're very rare across the country, but where they're occurring, you can use um, the IRC or the American uh, Wood Council's Permanent Wood Foundations Guide. So lots of options. Once you pick a particular route, you have to stay in that route. So if you choose to do ACI 332, then you have to do the entire foundation design with ACI 332. And with that, we're going to go to site preparation. David? Yeah, so we're going to do a little bit differently than um, what Maria had let you guys know. We're kind of go back and forth between Sandra and I. So. I'm going to start off with the site preparation, and um, really, this is quite an interesting one, uh, especially where I'm located here in Colorado. So um, if you're in areas of the country where there might be, you know, expansive soils, things like that, it can be really challenging to um, have fill that's, that's not only good suitable fill for your um, for your foundation but also prepared in a way that um, that will allow it to perform over time and so right up front here r4012 um, 
basically it's telling you the foundation needs to be able to support the loads in accordance with chapter uh, three. 